All right. Well, welcome back into Dragon Age Inquisition. But we are about to start the next or the DLC that follows after the base game, Jaws of Hakon. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but that's how I thought it was pronounced. But I could be incorrect. I've been known to be wrong on many other occasions, but it's okay. You guys know what I'm talking about. We're going to do the next DLC. And I also wanted to let you know, in our last episode, there was an achievement that popped up and I didn't know what the heck it was about. But after I finished recording, it says Inquisitor Achievement finished the single player campaign on Nightmare without lowering the difficulty. So there's my proof that I didn't once change the uh, difficulty level in this game. And it was actually quite fun playing on Nightmare. But now it's time to go to the war table and start the DLC. Everybody's gone. No people's in here celebrating anymore. I don't remember how long this DLC is. I don't think it's very long. Of course, we don't have Solus with us anymore, so that means we're going to choose somebody else to take with us. Which, we already know who that somebody else is going to be. It's going to be Viv. There's no other choice. Because I always have two mages, a fighter, and a rogue. Okay. I thought I saw something sparkling over here. What is this? Ten the Exalted Council. What's that about? Is it me, or is Cassandra more solemn than usual? Lady Pentagast only contemplates what awaits the next divine. You know Cassandra hates being called Lady Pentagast. I look forward to seeing Divine Victoria's reaction to the ceremony around her inauguration. Um, let me see what this is about. Oh, well, wait a minute. We already did this. Right? No, wait. Attend the Exalted Council. Warning, beginning the Exalted Council... We'll lock off all other areas and plots and jump to 944 Dragon, two years after the death of Corypheus. There is no going back from this point. With Corypheus dead and the threat of Fade Rifts and demons waning, both Orle and Ferelden have begun to raise questions about the future of the Inquisition. Divine Victoria has promised to shield the Inquisition from political matters. You've styled your hair that way for ages now, Leliana. Why don't we do something new with it? I'm used to the way it is. What about our commander? He does something with his hair already. Oh, it does look very nice today. I don't... <laughs> you mean it just gets that way on its own? Not entirely. <laughs> okay. Divine Victoria has promised to shield the Inquisition from political matters for as long as possible. Eventually, she plans to call the Exalted Council, a chance to determine the role and possibly the fate of the Inquisition, recommended levels 20 or higher. I don't think I'm going to mess with this yet because I don't, I don't know where it's going to take us or what it's going to do for us. So I'm going to leave that for now and focus on what we came here for, which was to go to the Frostback Mountains. Okay, investigate Frostback Basin. Minimum suggested level 20. I wonder if that other one was part of the DLC. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to investigate, though. To Ambassador Josephine Montillier. Thank you so much for your earlier correspondence. I confess it's been difficult to get those in Orlais to take this discovery seriously in light of recent events. But I am positive that scouting the Frostback Basin will yield historic discoveries beneficial to both the academic field and the Inquisition. 
As a staunch supporter, I am honored to be working in such great company on this historic occasion. Yours most sincerely, Professor Bram Kenrick, University of Orléans. Was this the same dude that was tracking down the dragons? Kenrick, that name looks familiar. The University of Orléans has vouched for Professor Kenrick. He, if he says there is something worthwhile in Frostback Basin, we should investigate. But let's investigate. We are definitely above level 20. We scouted the region and set up camp. Professor Kenrick has the scouts gathering anything they can find. So far, we've uncovered a lot of very old buckles. Hopefully, this yields something more exciting. Anyone who comes here should be ready for hostile wildlife and angry avar. This place is dangerous. Scout Harding. Oh, okay. Would you like to gather your party and venture to Frostback Basin now? Yes, please. All right, Dorian. Mm. What? Uh, wait a minute. There's something fishy going on here because I wanted Cassandra to be the divine, but in the, in the rolling of the credits when Morgan was telling the history, it said that Liliana was the divine, so I'm confused. This tells me that Cassandra is the divine. I'm totally confused. And of course, we don't have Solus because he left us. Oh, look at the wolf in the bottom right. Mm-hmm. Solus, you sneaky, sneaky. All right, Viv. I did confirm it, but I guess it didn't catch it that I did. So I had to hit the button twice. We're going to have to check on Viv, make sure she's all leveled up. Good to see you again, Inquisitor. Allow me to introduce Professor Bram Kenrick. He's the reason we're out here. A pleasure to meet you, Your Worship. Nah, it's not the same guy. Professor Kenrick teaches at the University of Orlais. I came on an exchange program from Starkhaven. While in Val Royo, I found something incredible. After 800 years, we may be able to determine the final resting place of the last Inquisitor. I'm afraid I'm a little behind on my studies. Inquisitor Emeridan stepped down shortly before the Navaran Accord brought the Seekers of Truth into the Chantry. He hunted demons, dragons, and dangerous apostates in a time before Templars even existed. I'm all for history if it means tracking down the equipment of a famous demon hunter. How can we help you find Inquisitor Emeridan's resting place? Your scouts have gathered artifacts from the area. They may help us discover what Inquisitor Emeridan was doing. I have news as well. We've encountered hostile Avar to the north. They call themselves the Jaws of Hakon. There's also an Avar hold to the east. Unlike the Jaws of Hakon, they've been friendly so far. The Jaws of Hakon? They're hostile Avar who attack any Inquisition agents or researchers who get close. We've sent soldiers for defense, but the Hakonites are cunning, merciless, and know the basin better than we do. I'm afraid our men will not be able to hold out long. Okay, so it is pronounced Jaws a hack on. Um, let's see what this says. I thought we could catch up. Anytime, Inquisitor. I hear you have family in Ferelden. Yes, my mother and father. I insisted they move to Denerim once I signed up with the Inquisition. Ambassador Montillier tells me I should invite them to Skyhold. She thinks they'd be proud of me. But after Haven, I, I just can't, you know? It's not that I don't trust you or our soldiers. It's just, I just want them to be safe. And if that means they don't get to see things firsthand, that's okay. My mother likes writing letters anyway. Hmm, okay. They say you grew up in a village. 
Where did you learn how to fight? Draw a bow? All that? Here and there. You pick things up as a little dwarf girl in a village filled with piggish Ferelden boys. I'm no artist with a blade. I just know what hurts, and what takes them down quick. Bruised a shin or two in my day, and a few... You know, other things. <laughs> and archery? Oh, there was a traveling hunter who set me up with my first bow, and taught me the basics. After that, I practiced on my own. <laughs> on squirrels, mostly. Oh, and Heinrich from next door, but only with padded arrows. What do you think about the Avar? When I was a little girl, a lady in our village used to tell me Avar tales. Being able to see their lives up close? It's nothing like I thought. They're very tall, aren't they? I was considering a proposal for Commander Cullen. Avar allies with dwarven archers astride their shoulders. They'd be unstoppable. Hmm. Have you spoken to Kenrick much? A bit. He's quite nice, isn't he? And clever. Really loves his books. I said hello one day while he had his nose buried in a giant tome. His shriek was a winner. I <laughs> can't stop doing it now. <laughs> it's too funny. I'm liking Scout Harding. I really do like her. And I like the armor that she's wearing, too. How do you like the Frostback Basin? It's lovely, isn't it? At least until you step in a pile of bogfisher poo. The stuff's vile. It makes great fuel for starting fires, though. If you can tolerate the smell. <sighs> I might suggest that to the commander. It could be great for sieges. Hmm. Yeah, good idea. That's a brilliant idea. I'll endorse it. Wonderful. I'll write it up as soon as I get back to Skyhold. We defeated Corypheus. I thought you'd have returned to your old life. After everything I've seen, I don't think I could ever go back to my old life. Could you? I can't just pretend. I can't just pretend I'm the same person. I got a letter from my mother. She was happy the breach was sealed. She had no idea what we went through. And I don't have the heart to tell her. Yeah, that's good. We'll continue this another time. See you soon, Inquisitor. Yeah, don't tell her. She doesn't she doesn't need to know all the, the spicy details. Ooh, look at this armor that I have on Viv. Oh, she's looking pretty nice. Okay, so we have a lot of journal entries coming up here. Okay, looks like that's it. Let's take a look at Viv first to make sure she's leveled up. Well, we got one point here for Dorian to spend. Um, I don't think there's anything in here. Not really. Um, looks like the only thing in here is an upgrade. Despair. Horror inflicts even deeper tear upon targets and reduces their armor while they are under its effects. Okay, I was just making sure that this was slotted. While they are under its effects, 50% weapon damage per second, 20% armor reduction. And tear, enemies struck by horror cower in place and do not react to attacks until they take significant damage. Health threshold, 25%. Ooh. I think I want to learn that. Yep. Okay. Black wall, one point for you. See if we get this, where are we going to put it? No idea. Uh, what is that shield one? Is that. Shield bash. Hmm. Might get rid of that. What does this do? Walking fortress. You may not be able to hold them off forever, but right now nothing can touch you. You have complete immunity to damage for a short time. Eight seconds. Buy this. 
And let's map it to here. Now, what is this? Siege Breaker. Every attack that strikes you while walking fortress is active increases your guard. Guard amount 10%. Guard, okay, we know that what guard does. And let's see. Focused defense. All of the damage you take while walking fortress is active is converted into focus. Hmm. I don't know. I think I would probably take that siege breaker, but we got some time to think about it. Since it's going to probably be a long time before we level up again. Viv, oh my gosh, you got 14 points, girl. I think we were using fire with her, yes. And then we also have to do her night enchanter. Whether it's high fashion or the battlefield, Vivian prefers to be at the forefront and in control of everything around her. She will personally see order restored by the blade if necessary. Woo-wee! Spicy, spicy! Spirit Blade. You create a blade of solid magic to make melee attacks against nearby enemies. Dealing damage with other abilities charges the blade. Attacking expends the charge to deal additional. Oh yeah, we're definitely putting that on. Now, let me see. Is there anything in this fire area we want to not focus on? So we have flash fire. Okay, that is probably pretty good. Im immolate. Oh gosh darn it, that's pretty good too. And then down here fire mine okay we could probably get rid of the fire mine which is on the back bar okay all right let's get this and we're gonna map it to Oh, okay, it already mapped. I guess it went to the empty one. All right, whatever, game. Okay. Combat clarity. The chaos of combat frightens some, but for you, it's a comfortable rhythm. Your mana regenerates faster when you're near hostile enemies. And that leads down into Fade Shield. Draw back the energy released by your enemies in your attacks against them. Any successful attack strengthens your barrier. The more damage you do, the more powerful your barrier becomes. Mmm, that sounds pretty good. Build Repulsed. Whenever you have a barrier active, enemies who attack you will take damage in return. Ooh, that sounds good too. Alright, so this is a... Um, oh, this unlocks Constitution of plus three. This is a passive ability. Let's go ahead and get it. Uh, now, what is the upgrade here? Defending Blade. You deflect incoming projectiles with Spirit Blade, sending a shockwave of energy back at the attacker. Amplified Blade. Spirit Blade generates charge more quickly, but you expend all energy when striking an enemy. Hmm. So really, we only have to worry about this for people that are shooting arrows at us, which is probably... A good thing, though it says that she likes to be up close and in charge. So I don't know which one I should get here. Let's uh, get this. Hey, this is Fade Cloak. You surround yourself with the magic of the veil itself. You are briefly, briefly invulnerable and can pass through enemies unharmed. Okay. And it put it back there. All right. Resurgence. You call on benign spirits to restore you and your allies for continuing the fight. All party members are healed to full health, including those who have fallen unconscious. And a glyph around you provides ongoing healing to the party for the spell's duration. Oh, yeah. We're going to learn that. And that's going to go right. Uh, map. Right here. Okay, and then the shield. 
Veiled Repulsed. Night Protector. You're adept with defensive magic. Barriers you create take longer to naturally decay. Yes. Thank you. What is this? Disruption Field. You fill an area with magical energy that slows and weakens your enemies. Enemies larger than the field are immune. So it just slows, slows them down. Do we want to get rid of something for this? Um... Let me see. I think this is revival. We better keep that because that one with the heart through it, that is a major focus. Uh, let's get that. I don't know about this last, this last ability here. Status lock. Enemies caught in disruption field are slowed to a stop over the course of several seconds. Striking them ends the effect. Or charged disruption. When enemies take damage inside the field, spirit blade gains power. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Okay, upgrade to Fade Cloak, Decloaking Blast. If you rematerialize inside an enemy, they're blasted back with massive force. Spirit damage, 1,000 weapon damage. Oh my gosh. Endearing Cloak, the lower the charge on your spirit blade, the longer Fade Cloak lasts. Holy cannoli, I really like the sounds of this. Well, we're going to learn that. Okay, and then let's see if there's any bad thing in this fire area. No more cold spells. That stinks. Clean burn. Your spells burn away ambient magic that would otherwise slow down your casting. Every spell you cast shortens your active cooldown times. Cooldown reduction one second. Plus three willpower unlocked. And what is this? Wall of fire. You conjure a flaming barrier that burns and panics enemies that pass through it. Six meters. Last 20 seconds. 200% weapon damage. Lasting flames. Or wall of flame. Wall of flame now begins at your location and moves away from you over the duration of the spell. Hmm. Got four points. All right, let's go ahead and get this. Uh, get this. Gosh, where to put this? Um, I decided to get that. That does 300% weapon damage. Does 200% weapon damage per second. Uh, oh no, it might get rid of this flash fire. Like this. Too many good spells. Hmm. Still got two points. Let me make sure there's nothing else in here. Transmute magic. Spelling magic and status effects increases your own spells damage and barrier generation for a brief duration. Strength and veil. Spell now weakens the magical attacks of affected enemies. I don't know about that. Mind blast. 
Eldritch Detonator ability used on incapacitated foes for combo. I don't know, you guys. Rare Revival. Okay, I'm lollygagging too long here. Let me go ahead and learn this. Put it there. Wait a minute, why is... Why is this... Why is a spirit blade on two areas? Okay, we're going to fix that right now. We're going to put this back on. Do we want to put this on? Mark the ground. Eh. 300% weapon damage, 75% weapon damage per second. This is an area of effect for three meters. All right, let's put this back on. Map to right here. Thank you very much. That looks better. Now, do we want to upgrade this? Size bonus three meters. Damage duration bonus four seconds. I don't think I've ever done this wave of flame. Let's. Get it and see how it works. Maybe she'll use it. All right. And then. Whoops. We're not done yet. Viv. We've got to. Set these taxes up. Let's enable that. Um, this can be disabled. This can be disabled. Okay, I think that's it. Yep, all right. It should be good. 50 magic. Okay, 36 willpower. We gotta work on our willpower. All right, and then let's see what she is wearing. Okay, she's got a staff of fire drake that does 118. Ooh, we should we're gonna have to craft her something better. Yeah. Move that to valuables. Level 15. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me go back to the valuables. Okay, level 15. Three fire damage. Okay. Um, it looks like this and this one is better for right now, anyways. Armor. Uh, level 15-ish. How does she compare with Dorian? Oof. Yeah, we're going to have to craft her some better armor. Looks like I need some better armor, too. And accessories. Fire resistance belt.
I'd rather she wear that. Okay, and rings. Oh gosh. Immolate rings. Oh, we're gonna need to look and see. I thought I might have took that off. She's gonna need some rings. Okay, and amulet. Enhanced amulet of magic. Let's give her this. Okay, and those rings were immolate. Okay, good. She still has it on. I couldn't remember, but thank goodness. she's Those rings are still good. All right, now, finally, uh, we're only 30 minutes in. We haven't done anything yet, but look at inventory and get Viv up to character level. Let's look at the journal. Prospect Basin. The Basin beckons. Now that the Inquisition has established a presence in Frostback Basin, Professor Kenrick has a lead on Inquisitor Ermeridin, and Scout Harding can outline potential risk in the region. Speak with Professor Kenrick. Lead the charge. Jaws of Hakon are attacking Inqui Inquisition soldiers. Fight with Inquisition soldiers against the Jaws of Hakon. Avar allies. Make contact with the Avar hold to the east. Could provide the Inquisition with useful allies. Find the Avar hold. Rift in the floor. Okay, a fade rift. Holding Frostback Basin. Oh, wow, there are six camps here. So now it's time to take a look at the map. Okay, okay, well, Kendrick is over here, so let's go speak with him, and I guess we'll go close that fade rift. And let's see about... Do we have any Inquisitions here yet? Shouldn't. No Inquisition officer is coming up to me. Where are the potions? We need to make sure Viv is good. Uh, oh gosh, we need some blood lotus. Go ahead and replenish that. I won't do my bee, jar of bees yet. Oh, that takes blood lotus. Let's see. Okay, I have regen. Dorian has a healing. Okay, we'll keep this on her. And then what do we want to put here? We could do the fire as well. Or we could try something. Oh, that takes Blood Lotus too. Golly. It takes Blood Lotus for everything. Well, I shouldn't say that because <laughs> it doesn't. It just seems like the ones I want to use require Blood Lotus. These bees are so good, though. I'm going to put them on her, too. We're just going to have to look for Blood Lotus. Okay. Are we good? Let's go speak with Kendrick. Finally! Oh, look, the little parrots are back. Oh, loot! May I see? Uh, I thought I saw something. I don't know. Maybe it was clicking off of that camp. All right. Ooh, all kinds of stuff up here. Let's read this. Property of Colette. Pages of neatly written, painstakingly detailed notes fill a well-worn journal. The notes break midway through a list. 
Expedition to Frostback Basin Preparations. Reread Finding a Meridon complete. Review, no review notes on appropriate excavation methods complete. Practice categorization of minute material artifacts complete. Read book on Frostback Basin complete. Practice camping complete. Note: Bring a pillow. Reread an, an anatomy of various terrible beasts complete. Learn the fence. Cannot find willing instructor. Ask brothers for fencing defense lessons. Bad idea. Read book on survival and defense complete. Bring towels packed. Few idle swirls follow along with a tiny sketch of an elf defending a stack of papers from various terrible beasts. Caption reads field work. Okay. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, all the other loots are inside. All right. Wow. They got some artifacts here. I'll talk to you in a minute, sir. All right. Look at this place. Inquisitor Emeridon. What is known about Inquisitor Emeridon would barely fill a page. He was a friend of Imperial Dracon. He was Inquisitor when the Seekers of Truth folded themselves into the Chantry as part of the Navaran Accord, their order serving as a precursor to the Order of Templars and the Circle of Magi. Shortly after the Accord was signed between 122 and 124 Divine, Emeridon left his position and departed, never to be seen again. These facts alone are undisputed. Everything else is uncorroborated hearsay, broad speculation, or salacious rumor mongering. Emeridon did not willingly cede power. Dracon forced the Seekers of Truth to disband upon pain of death, then removed the Inquisitor rather than suffer rebellion in the new Chantry's ranks. Meriden was forced to retire due to the still young Chantry's restrictions requiring celibacy, and he was involved in a relationship with a mysterious Lady Mage that the Chantry erased from history. Meriden was a rowdy noble who cared more for raucous entertainment than for the Seekers. He held the position only because Dracon wanted a loyal friend commanding the Order, and when the Seekers became part of the Chantry, Emeridon was free to retire to a life of hunting dragons and winching. Any of these stories may be true, and without more evidence we have little hope of ever reaching a clear determination. Nevertheless, I would offer a few notes that are often overlooked as scholars delve so deeply into their own historical specialties as to lose key context. Firstly, Emperor Dracon rightly acknowledged as the man who molded the Chantry into the organization it is today was a pious man, committed to spreading the Chanted Light and creating a world where magic and men were, were governed by Androstian principles. All sources agree that Emeridon was a close friend of Dracon, and while it is certainly impossible that Emeridon was more pragmatic than pious, it is highly unlikely that Dracon would have befriended a figure who was actively opposed to the Chantry much less tolerated such a man holding a position of power in the growing Orlesian Empire. Secondly, Inquisitor Emeridon was universally claimed as a powerful combatant, regardless of his supposed faith or lack thereof. Rumor mongers suggesting Emeridon was exiled asked us to believe that Emperor Dracon would see no use for a powerful warrior with years of command experience. Given that the Second Blight had been a fact of religion life for more than 15 years at the time of American disappearance, with darkspawn pouring from the Anderfells into northern Orle in growing numbers. It is frankly absurd to suggest Dracon would casually dispose of such a military asset, would casually dispose of such a military asset. Without further evidence, we may never know more about American's departure. Nevertheless, I hope that we may eschew the currently popular cynicism, at least when obvious evidence against it is presented, to see that his disappearance must have had some other cause. From Finding a Meriden by Professor Bram Kendrick, Starkhaven University Press. So I need to make um, a correction here because I was reading about the Seekers. And I stand corrected because it just jogged my memory. I wanted Liliana to be the divine, but somehow triggered that Cassandra was going to be the divine. And that's why Cassandra was not available, because she ended up as the divine. So I don't know what was making me think that Liliana was divine. I guess because I wanted her to be so, and it, did, it just didn't happen. 
I will take all that. Thank you. What is this? Oh, there's another letter out there that I guess I missed. Questions of accuracy that moved against them were halted by the light from her most assured hands. It was then she took her own counsel in ways best not set forth here and led the party away. Did a Meriden's eyes seek hers among those assembled as he relayed the events which led them there? As she stood among us, I did not know her, yet his hand moved slightly at his side, as my own does when my wife is near, as my own does when my li wife is near, and I seek wordless comfort in the touch of her fingers. We had all heard the whispers. Did he say her name in the telling? Would he have dared? Times were different, but have they changed so much? Excerpt from the writings of Lord Bescon, first put to the page in 148 Divine. A letter follows. Henry, this is a pre precise copy. The preceding pages were lost or removed ages ago. Bescon makes no further references to this woman, although Ameridan comes up several times later on. Bescon's writings, as they pertain to Inquisitor Mer Ameridan, are not entirely unknown, although you're unlikely to find them among Chantry records. Their validity is largely dismissed. Some have questioned whether the so-called light in council referenced magic or holy insight. And, of course, Bascon wrote down his impressions many years after the fact. The author's own wife brought accuracy into question when she admitted her husband was recalling his youth in the Orlesian capital through nostalgia and age-distorted memory. I believe her admission is part of official Chantry record. Best of luck, M. Okay, that is all in here. Let's speak with him, and then we'll go look at that letter that's laying out there. Lady Har <clears throat> I mean, Scout Harding has an impressive team. Her people brought back a number of artifacts. If you need something tracked, Scout Harding is your woman. If only it were that easy. After 800 years, we can't just look for tracks. Barring enchantment, Cloth and leather will have long since rotted away. Only metal and stone remain recognizable. Complicating this are recent pieces the Avar left behind, and, of course, ancient pieces dating back to Tevinter. Fortunately, thanks to some period-specific buckling, I've been able to track our last Inquisitor. Really? You lost me at buckling. You'd think that a buckle was a buckle. But ever since people started belting on weapons, they've been adding bits. One piece here has a dragon engraving. With the alloys of the metals used, it's clearly to Vinter. While this one uses a clasp that wasn't invented until the dawn of the Elysian Empire. And when it comes to historical research, you might say we have to buckle down. Ha ha ha, you're so funny. You said there were pieces dating back to Tevinter. Yes, while it's rare to see Tevinta ruins so far south, the Imperium once had an outpost of some sort here. They might have built it as a, a ritual site. I'm not sure what military value it could have. In any event, it's muddled up the research slightly, but I've accounted for it. What do you have, Professor? Everything so far points to the shore, not far to the south. There was some sort of battle near the shoreline. They were in a hurry. The scouts reported an island near an Avar fishing camp, but the Avar won't say much about it. What makes you think the last Inquisitor was fighting? There's a clasp here common to armor links. It's clearly torn. That only happens from a heavy shearing blow, like large claws or an axe. Then there's the dagger. Silverite, with a stylized dragon pommel and an inscription reading Cordillus. That dagger had to be a gift from Cordillus Dracon, first emperor of Orlais. No one would just <laughs> lose such a thing. What can you tell me about the Avar fishing camp? Not much. It's the friendly Avar, not these jaws of Hakon barbarians. According to the scouts, they wouldn't say much about the area. Likely a local superstition. Hey, I'll find a way to that island and see if there's anything useful there. Excellent. I'll continue to study what's been found. With luck, we'll both find some answers. 
Also, one of my research assistants, Colette, was investigating an old structure to the north. I'm not certain it's related to our investigation, but it couldn't hurt to check with her. Okay, fine, Colette. Worthy publication. Henrik's research assistant, Colette, left a survey to Venta Ruins. Her finding could offer historical insight into the basin's past. Said to the north, right? Yep, northeast. Okay. Well, we're going to take care of this rift first. Whoops. Uh, marker, please. See how difficult it is here. The basin beckons is completed. Now, I saw something out here. Down here. It's been declared in Val Royale. I have every confidence in Lady Pentecost. A baffled note. A note affixed to a book entitled Sir Lathair Venar Duret's Victory and Dominion. Lady Harding, I could use the opinion of an expert. Though impressive, the victory outlined on the marked page could not have been achieved as stated. Bram Kenry. Sure it could, if you had enough apples. Harding. <laughs> How ironic that I thought you were irrelevant as a Grey Warden, and you weren't even that. Ah, the lady finds me funny. I have some use after all. From warden to jester, what a tremendous journey. Indeed, I count myself quite lucky. Few of us have the privilege of setting aside our masks, don't you think? Ah, this ought to be interesting, these two together. A letter to Harding, my darling Lace. I hope this letter finds you healthy and happy. Last week, I managed to barter for maps of Ferelden or and Orle from Hudgen, the old soldier who rents the place on Mistress Johan's farm. You remember him, don't you? Quiet man, always smoking a pipe in his chair on the porch. He wasn't using the maps anymore, so I gave him some of my jam and patched his coat in exchange for them. Now, whenever you tell me of your travels, I'll be able to track where you've been. I'm astounded, my darling, when I look at the weave of dotted trails I've already marked out on my maps. Oh, the places your feet have touched. How far you've gone, my little lace. I am so, so proud of you. When I was your age, I'd only ever gone as far as Lothering. My mother never left Redcliffe. She lived and died there. And now, here you are, flying so far with so much purpose. My mind can barely comprehend it, but my heart swells. I shan't take up too much of your time. I know how busy you are. I am looking at the frostbacks on the map as I write this because I know you will likely be at your skyhold. Please make sure to dress warmly. I've included the recipe for your favorite turnip goat stew. It tastes as a home to stave off the cold mountain airs. Kisses and hugs from me and your father, mother. Oh, that was sweet. Her parents really, really love her paying attention to where she's going even though they don't know the details and they don't need to know the details I'll just scare them very nice very nice all right I guess it's time to go close a rift what you guys think ready first rift in the frostback basin regions discovered two of 22 the basin floor There it is. Woo, girl. Oh, man. This is no, uh, no joke here. And 
Fear demon. They already... What is that? Fearling. Okay. Oh boy. You need to... Um... Oh, you've already... Somebody's already used some healing. Let's do this on you. Oh, and he's dead. Um, are you going to revive him, Viv, or what, girlfriend? Okay, you do that. And then can you wow there are a lot of enemies okay these phaedrus are no joke spell magic did she revive him or not it doesn't look like it okay i guess i'll oh yeah let's do this let me go revive him he's wheeze Okay, you're doing a barrier, all right. You already did it. Do that. Okay, I think we're all gonna need to focus here. Oh, these things, they're level 24. They're the same level as us. Good gravy. Who is that, Viv? Oh gosh. Ooh wee. All right, let's do this. I'm going to go try to disrupt the rift. Disrupt. What is happening? I can't see. I still didn't get to do. Whoa! Whoa! Holy cannolis! Wow! Get up, Sasha. Okay. Ooh, this is no joke right here, I'm telling you. No joke. Let's do this. Dorian! Okay, and let's do this on you daggone things. Disrupt it again. What an introduction. I tell you. Good 
pretty spicy. Pretty spicy. Oof. Yeah, they were the same level as me. Now I'm level 25. Whoa, look at all the loot. All right, let's take it all. Take it all. Okay, um, Blackwall, we're going to have to do something about you giving us some guard, buddy. Man, is this what I have to look forward to in this game? <laughs> Cause that was that was pretty uh, hot. Okay, let's see here. We have everything there. I thought I had all this, but I guess not. Let's go ahead and do this. Flask of Lightning. This flask sends you into a heightened state of incredible speed. Everyone on the battlefield except you moves more slowly for a short time. You can't use this ability while another elixir is active. Okay, well, we're going to be getting that soon. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I have to figure that out, but we still got a long ways to go. All right. Whew. Spicy, spicy. Let's see, here's a camp here. want to head this way? A mysterious island in Frostback Basin may yield clues to the region's past. Maybe I should go get this camp, do this, and then come back across this way. All right, you guys. We're gonna have to tighten it up. This looks interesting. Anything up there? Doesn't look like it. Well, Dorian, you scared the crap out of me. Camp over there. Oh, there's some fighting going on there. Those are the people we need to help. All right, let's see how we're going to get down here. Ah! Oh, sorry. Did we cross this way? Yes, so. Set up the camp. Oh, there's fighting going on. I can't move. It's stuck. I'm stuck. Let's give it a minute. here question mark there all right there we go wow very weird it's done that to me before though all right oh wait a minute i'm not ready to fight calm down calm down 
We're gonna actually end this episode right here. Wow, what a what a start. <laughs> Almost death. Well, my character actually did die, and so did Dorian. But when we come back, we're gonna go see what um, those enemies are about over there. We're gonna help the um, soldiers, I think is what it said. Help the soldiers. Oh, there's another rift. Fight with Inquisition soldiers against the Jaws of Hakon. And I'm sure we'll get a chance to venture into that cave. So, welcome to the very first episode of the Jaws of Hakon. I hope it's going to be a thrilling expansion for us all. And thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this very first episode, I appreciate it. If you would leave a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And subscribe. It's free to do both. And I will see you guys on in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye.